Welcome back to the Farah interview series where we are taking you behind the scenes at the International Ataxi Research Conference. Dave Lynch just got off the stage. Seconds ago. We cornered him, we found a room, and so here we are because we want to find out about Omavaloxalon. Is that right, Randy? A absolutely. Would you care to share with us some of the observations you made to the International Ataxi Research Conference about the recent findings in Omav? Sure. As is out on the Riata website, uh, recently OMAV in the MOXI trial part two did show a benefit to individuals on drug compared with those in placebo. It was greater than what one would typically see in oh, one year of progression, showing that it probably meets the criteria for intrinsic cl clinical meaning. Intrinsic clinical meaning. What does that, that mean? That is to say that people it represents something which is a clear improvement in people's clinical abilities. Okay, so when you look at people without the drug, you look at people with the drug, there was some demonstrable benefit to having omevaloxalone on. Yes, and when they, people were interviewed as to whether they got better, a majority did say they got better, and in one of the populations that reached statistical significance. Moreover, really showing that it is clinically meaningful is that the amount that people said they got better correlated very highly with the objective responses measured by exams. So the subjective experiences of the patients match with the objective data from the study? Yes, that's what it that's appears. great. So Dave, when someone goes, all right, what do I do now? How is this going to benefit me? Well, how do you answer that question? Because I'm sure you, you get that in clinic, right? Like, what, what do we do now? We do indeed get questions like that. So the most important thing is to appreciate things that, uh, that it has been successful. I would recommend people taking a look at the Riata website so they can look at the graph which is posted there. That's the only public uh, data available so they can understand that the benefit is not immediate but actually accrues over the course of a year, mm. which is a good thing. And at the end of the one year, the curve looks pretty flat so that we'll see what happens in the future. The other thing they can do is stay abreast of the developments that they occur as Riata attempts to move this forward, perhaps toward registration. I understand that uh, patients who were involved in the clinical trial have an option to continue on after, late, after the, the conclusion of the trial? The people who were on drug had an option to continue on, and in fact, almost everyone did. 90% of them elected to continue on. What, what does that say to you about the safety of the drug that m the vast majority of people who were part of the clinical trial actually can elected to continue to use it? I think it, it is a specific safety criteria, and that is listed on the website that these people continued because it showed they weren't having a lot of adverse events that they noted. Yeah. If, they didn't, if, they didn't, if it didn't make them feel good, if it made them sick, they probably wouldn't continue on. That would be one reason for not continuing on. Other reasons for not continuing include the pragmatics of continuing a clinical trial and visiting the site because the ongoing use is still part of the clinical trial, and you have to go to specific places to get it. So one more thing, I want to I want you to comment on the participation of patients and and volunteering themselves in change and uh, you know modifying their lives so they can be part of this. I think uh, without the patients, obviously you cannot do trials. In this case, the patients put out a lot traveling. Uh, many visits, I believe seven or eight over the course of that one year uh, for evaluation and even in the ongoing use, still people have to come to see us every six months and it is difficult. We're all appreciative for the people who do that. Yeah, me too. I'm so appreciative. Yeah, without question. All right. Anything else that the FA community should know about omavaloxalone at this point in time? I would say just stay tuned, watch the progress as it occurs and see what the next step becomes as we talk more and more about it. Very reasonable advice from Dr. David Lynch. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for continuing to join us in our continuing series, the FARA interview series, behind the scenes at IARC 2019. Uh, we will continue to produce these videos as long as you continue to watch them. So check us out on the Facebook, uh, the FARA Facebook page, on the FARA website, on FARA Twitter. Yep, yep, all the things, all things FARA, you can find us, so. It's probably merchandise. Yeah, we'll see thanks ya. so much. All right, Dave, I understand you have some special shoes, and um, I want you to let, let everyone know about them. Yes, I have some custom-produced shoes, courtesy of my coordinators, with a lot of effort to iron on the bilateral Cure FA. 
It's been so popular that we're looking to move forward with a corporate sponsor to really make these for as many people as possible. If you're interested, simply send an email to me or one of the people in my group and we'll see how much interest we can get. Do they, do they give you any special powers? They do not. <laughs> at present, I have not discovered specific special powers, but that study is ongoing. <laughs> Cure FA, just yeah. do it. <laughs> I'm going to regret 